Entitled Love Wisdom, Love Life. Let's open up with 2 Ezra chapter 4 and verse 12. 2 Ezra. 2 Ezra 4, verse 12. Then said I unto him, It were better that we were not at all. This is the uh, prophet Ezra talking with one of the four archangels. I believe he's talking to Raphael. It's been a while since I read this. Uriel. That's one. Okay, thank you. Uriel, light of God. All right, verse 12. Thank you. Then said I unto him, It were better that we were, that we were not at all than that we should live still in wickedness and to suffer and not to know wherefore. So the prophet Ezra was complaining like many of us do. He was complaining about Israel going through sin, Israel going into captivity after captivity. What captivity was this one, uh, Levi? Levi. Uh, Levi. What captivity? Who agrees with that? Raise your hand. Nobody. Who disagrees with him? What captivity was this? Um, according to the scriptures, it was uh, Persian and Mede captivity. Right, Persian and Mede captivity. We don't? He answered me and said, I went into a forest, into a plain, and the trees took counsel and said, Come, let us go and make war against the sea that it may depart away before us. So he's given an, an, an analogy of war amongst the trees. Read it again. He answered me and said, I went into a forest, into a plain, and the trees took counsel and said, Come, let us go and make war against the sea. So in this thing, he saw this vision. He's explaining, this is the angel speaking. No, this is uh, Ezra speaking, that he saw the trees make counsel to fight against the sea. Go ahead. He's the angel. Go ahead. The angel. Go ahead. He said, Come, let us go and make war against the sea, that it may depart away before us, and that we may make us more woods. The floods of the sea also in like manner took counsel and said, Come, let us go up and subdue the woods of the plain. And so now the floods of the sea also took counsel and said, Let's go up and subdue the woods of the plain. Go ahead. That there also we may make us another country. Come on. The thought of the wood was in vain, but the fire came and consumed it. So now while the forest was talking, fire came and consumed the forest. Go ahead. The thought of the floods of the sea came likewise to naught. For the sand stood up and stopped them. So now, when the sea had their counsel, the sand stood up and held them back. Go ahead. If thou wert judged now betwixt these two, whom wouldst thou begin to justify? So now the angel's asking, if you were judged between these two, who would you justify? Go ahead. Or whom wouldst thou condemn? I answered and said, verily, it is a foolish thought that they, ha that they both have devised. For the ground is given unto the wood, and the sea also has its place to bear his floods. Then answered he me and said, Thou hast given a right judgment, but why judgest thou not thyself also? So he said, why can't you judge yourself then? If you can make proper judgment concerning the forest, concerning the sea, why can't you judge yourself? Go ahead. For like as the ground is given unto the wood, and the sea to its floods, even so they that dwell upon the earth may understand nothing but that which is upon the earth. So he says, you can only understand that which is upon the earth. Go ahead. And he that dwelleth above the heavens may only understand the things that are above the height of the heavens. Go ahead. Then answered I and said, I beseech thee, O Lord, let me have understanding. 
For it was not my mind to be curious of, high, of the high things, but of such as pass by us daily. Namely, wherefore Israel is given up as a reproach to the heathen, and for what cause the people whom thou hast loved is given over unto ungodly nations, and why the law of our forefathers is brought to naught, and the written covenants come to none effect. And we pass away out of the world as grasshoppers, and our life is astonishment and fear. And we are not worthy to obtain mercy. So in reading this, this is what I was explaining a couple of weeks ago. How we are to learn about things upon the earth and stop seeking out. I made the joke about the uh, 12 harpers, mm -hmm. the 24 elders. We're always seeking out deep things up in the heavens. But earthly things we struggle with. We struggle with earthly things. So this is what the angel was correcting Esdras about. Go to chapter 3, verse 21. Chapter, go to Sirach, I mean, Sirach chapter 3. Ecclesiasticus 3, 21. Ecclesiasticus 3, verse 21. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee. So what Sirach is saying to us here, is the same thing the angel was telling the prophet Ezra. Is the same thing I'm explaining to you brothers, you sisters. The basic things in life we have no understanding of. Some of you are ready to put one another to death and the hatred you have for each other, yet you want to talk about the sun, the moon, and the stars. You want to talk about Raphael, Uriel. Come on, stop. You're playing games. Good. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength, but what is commanded thee. Think thereupon with reverence, for it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Right, it's not needful for us to see the things that are in secret. Don't worry about Christ's garment. I wonder what the design is like. Okay, I wonder what armor Michael wears. Don't worry about that. He says, but what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence, meaning love, sincere, fervent love, which is the Most High's laws. Come on. Be not curious in unnecessary matters, for more things are showed unto thee than men understand. Right. The bit that we're learning here is more than men understand. The little things that we're learning here in this body, this part of the nation is more than men understand. Basic things like love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is hard for our people to understand. Like I said, some of y'all betray each other over, over a rotten butt. Y'all, some of you brothers have betrayed one another. Uh, some of you brothers have dis disregarded the word of God completely for some rotten punani. And you could care less. You sit amongst us, sure, that's fine. Now, I thought I was going to let this topic go. I can't let it go. It's been just troubling me. It's been bothering me. Uh, from there, let's go to Sirach 17. Elder, the reason why it's bothering you is because it shows you the caliber of men that are around you. And it worries you. Because the example that you're giving, the analogy that you're giving, when you see brothers getting caught up, in unnecessary matters and as he said rotten but <laughs> for lack of, of 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 words you start to wonder what what type of team you got exactly right that's why he, you can't let it go it's bothering your heart because you're thinking you're building something and you're thinking you're going somewhere and they take you 10 steps backwards exactly and the worst part about it is that you you've been taught that you are the gods you are the gods of the most high you are the gods on this earth and, you, and you're willing to kill each other over some rotten behind, over some unrepentant behind, over some behind stuffed in some tight pants smelling like fish. Sirach 17 verse 16. Every man from his youth is given to evil. So sisters, I want y'all to pay, pay close attention to this. Every man from his youth, know your kids ain't no good. Your kids ain't no good. My kids ain't no good. They got to be taught to be good. Read that again. I want this word to marinate. Every man from his youth is given to evil. We are all given to evil from childhood. That's why David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. Every child in here is wicked as hell. Every child. 
Not my baby. He goes, well, no, not my baby. Yeah, your baby's the devil. I don't care how quiet he sits here. Some of your sons just sit here real quiet. That boy is the devil. And he probably got more demons than the loud ones. We see him. Read it again. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Read that last word again. Evil. Read it again. Evil. Read it again. Evil. See that? Evil. Go ahead. Neither could they make to themselves fleshy hearts for stony. If we're left on our own, we can't have fleshy hearts, meaning righteous hearts for stony, meaning get rid of the wicked hearts we got if we left on our own. We can't do it. We got to be taught. Go ahead. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion. Israel. We are Israel. We are the Lord's portion. Come on. Whom being his firstborn, he nourished with discipline. He nourished Israel with what? Discipline. Uh, Osiris, what is that discipline he nourished us with? What is that discipline? Like keep, keeping your beard trimmed. Okay? Keeping your beard on. Growing it. Okay. And, and also having fringes on. Uh, where you at, I done? Verse 18. Come on. Whom being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline. And giving him the light of his love, doth not forsake him. What is the light of his love? Uh, behind Iran. Marvin. The light of his love was his law, statutes, and commandments. Where would you go to explain that? I'm not too sure about that. Behind you, uh, Zovan. The light is as low as you find that in Proverbs 6, verse 23. Right. Let's get that done. Proverbs 6, 23. Proverbs 6, 23. Very good. Proverbs 6, verse 23. See, I like to know when your brothers are studying. It lets me know I'm not wasting my time with you. But more so than studying, I like to know more so that you're doing what? Applying. Applying. Because when you don't apply, it lets me know I'm wasting my time talking to you. You're a waste of life. Just go somewhere. Go ahead. Proverbs 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Y'all see that? All right, from there, go back to where you were at, I thought, Sirach. Yep, verse um, 18 again. Mm -hmm. Sirach 8, 17, verse 18. Whom being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline, and giving him the light of his love doth not forsake him. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him, and his eyes are continually upon their way. There's nothing you or me or anybody up in here can do that the Lord don't see. A lot of times, brothers, to get me, get you know what I want. Philippians or Paul? Yeah. Presence, that one. Yeah, that one. A lot of times we think, God don't see me. You might have your lights off. You on the internet. You on your telephone. Now they're going to start adding the phone in it. You on your phone, or you in the, or you in the bathroom, whatever you're doing, or you walking down the street 3 a.m. in the morning, I'm talking about pss, pss, and you think you're good. Nobody sees you. You got it, I thought. Yep. Where we at? Philippians 2:12. Philippians, go to Philippians 2 verse 12. We coming right back to Sirach. And you know when you feel like that, that nobody sees you or God ain't gonna do do nothing. That means you only fear man. You only fear man. You don't fear God. Go ahead. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Because Paul was getting on the Philippians. He says, don't obey just in my presence only. Because we're all super Israelites one, among one another. Yeah, brother, shalom. Most high men can't us. Whoa. Power. Be strong in the Lord. <laughs> then you were outside on the street. Hey girl, how you doing? Shalom. <laughs> Ain't nobody looking. Read that again. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. We gotta be much more diligent in the absence one of another. Much more fervent, much more serious when we're not in one another's presence. Go back to Sirach. 17, and what verse was that? 20. 19. 19. Sirach 17, verse 19. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him. The most I see is what we all do. It's like the sun. You got the lights off, but it's like the sun is shining in that room. 
Go ahead. And his eyes are continually upon their ways. And the Lord is always watching us. Always. Wait, give me that scripture in Matthew. The one about their angels do always behold with the face. That one. I want that one. Now I need y'all to understand this. Matthew 18, verse 10. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. These little ones are those brothers and sisters who follow the Lord like children. Not questioning, not doubting. Go ahead. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. That's what a lot of y'all don't realize. There is an angel assigned to each and every one of us. There is a spirit assigned to us recording everything we think. What we do, what we say. Read it again so it can sink in. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Right. The angels report what's going on, what we're doing. Everything's in perfect order with the Most High. You don't see that. Sometimes y'all see spirits out the corner. Y'all see something move. Yep. What the hell? Yep. You be late at night. Sometimes you watch your TV. You see something out the corner of your eye move. What the hell was that? There's spirits always there. Always around us. Don't sleep. Especially you brothers that do wickedness and think you're getting away with it. Nobody sees me. Girl, what you wearing? <laughs> Elder, can I ask them a question? Yeah. What does it mean to despise a little one? Who knows? Come on, we were just going to read over this and no one says anything? Bezalel. Mike. That's talking about mistreating those that are young in this truth. That's right. Matthew 18 verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them. So, now he called the child. The child he called over to him is not a hard-headed child. Understand that. He called a child that was in order. Go ahead. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted. So now he says, except you, you disciples, you grown adults, Except you be converted. What converts us, Iran? Love. Where would you go to prove that? Shavon? Psalms 19. Psalms 19, verse 7. Write that down. That's what converts us. The law converts us. Read on. Except you be converted and become as little children. Now, he don't mean you become a seven-year-old again. What did he mean by that? Uh, Leon, what do you mean by that? Because he's talking to grown-ups. Except you grown us become as little children. What does he mean? Meaning a little child. Um, you can teach him anything and he won't question, he won't ask him. So you gotta be just like that in the truth. You heard that? You understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll see. We all gotta become like little children. No matter how old we are. Go ahead. Except you be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So the little one is that brother or that sister who's repented. It's not that brother or sister who's thinking about repenting. Because guess what? If you're not up in here or none of the congregation, you ain't ready yet. You're playing games. Yep. You're not one of the little ones. Yep. You gotta be in it. Like the well, commercial, you gotta be in it to win it. You gotta be in this truth. You online, y'all got to be in this truth. Not window shopping. Not window shopping. So those online that's doing what the scriptures say, those are the little ones. Those sending arms, those helping, giving out flat, those are the little ones. Not the ones on Facebook, <laughs> let's do this and let's go out. You're not one of the little ones. You are not, I'm gonna say it again so there's no misunderstanding. You are not one of the little ones. Not yet, not yet. Who had the hand up? Yeah, I did. Go ahead. Then if you do have the devil on, you're talking about I'm a grown up woman or the grown up men. That's when you got the devil on. The Bible says we have to come as children. We 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 come that a brother was talking about I'm a grown up man. He was out the door. You understand? Don't caught up in the spirit talking about you're a grown up man. Don't say nothing to me. We all come in this as children. So we have to obey these laws, statutes, and commands. Ain't no grown up man. Most I look at you as a grown up man. You still a baby to this. Where we at, Sarah? Yeah. Go back there. Chapter what verse? Where 17, was? Seventeen, verse twenty. 
17 verse 20. 19, man. Step up to 19. Yeah, all right. 20. Verse 19. Therefore all their works are. Sirach 17 verse 19. Therefore all their works are as the sun before him, and his eyes are continually upon their ways. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him. So you crackhead brothers, understand that? Because some of y'all probably devil and crack. Weed, laced with PCP. I heard that about that last night. Wet. Smoking wet. The Lord sees everything. What's your name? Judy. Judy? Mm -hmm. Where are you from, Miss Judy? Uh, Atlanta. Atlanta? Mm -hmm. What parts? Um, basically all over. Hey, this is what you get for $5. Mm -hmm. Now this is a good, it's a good texture though. It's a good texture. It's hard, clean color. I wouldn't say it's glass, but <coughs> I, I spent five. Right now, you're melted it into the Brillo? Yeah, melted it into the Brillo. Number one, <coughs> so it won't fall off. You ready? Yeah. It's pretty good texture, though. You only get one hit. Now, people say everybody has their own trip. Like I told you uh, early on in, in the documentary, it's like when I when I when I smoke crack, it's like I remain the same. Excuse me. Some people might come back here and take out on the ground. Some might take out running, but I remain the same. It, it doesn't expect me no different. You know? I, I hit once, put my stem up, and go do what I, what I would normally do. Then I might come back about 20 or 30 minutes later and hit it again. So, just, I keep my composure. You know, it's, it, it makes me more aware of, of my surroundings. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a very observant person. You know, it's like, it, it don't affect me like it, like it used to. How long have you been using crack? Um, since, I guess, uh, 82. My name is Judy. I've been walking these streets for about nine years. Sometimes I got to sleep outside in the cold. Sometimes I don't have shit to eat. But these are the sacrifices I made in order to feed my addition to crack cocaine. Um, originally from Virginia, Atlanta, my home now. Um, 52 years old, on the wrong path. Well, I, I ain't always done with drugs, you know what I'm saying? My profession, I'm a licensed chef. Yeah. And um, I got caught up in drugs. Selling drugs, smoking. I have a beautiful family. I have a daughter, 34, three grandkids, one great grand. My daughter, my daughter named Stephanie. Um, she come by, she come by, see me every day. She uh, she said, "Mommy, you ready to go home?" I'm not, I'm not here by choice, not because I have to be here. It's just, it's just respecting my, my, my house, my house, my grandkids, my daughter. She know what I do. It, it, it hurts her for me to be out here because she, she tells me, Mama, I keep having these bad dreams. I keep getting hurt. I've been in jail so many times, you wouldn't believe it. I've been in prison, jail. My, 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 my police record is so, it's ugly. Possession, possession with intent, possession with intent to distribute. 
Nothing but drugs. Nothing but drugs, you know. My record's so ugly, I can't even have a sponge. It, 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 always, it always be that with me. Yeah, I'm a job band. Yeah, I used to be a beautiful one. I have that one. I used to be a measurette. Chilly. No fault high school. Very intelligent. Major A. What happened on that day? My dad. My great killed my mama. Great husband killed my mama. They gave my mama two hundred rounds. Not a dollar each time. I've been gone ever since. Um, God bless day you did now. We, you know, when he used to take a hit, he used to, like... And when he came down one day, I said, man, I met you something. I said, when you take a hit, why do you do that? He said, everybody that I've done wrong in life, he see I'm coming at him with guns, chains, sticks, axes, trying to kill him. You know, that's why I say, it, it, every, it, it affects people differently, you know? You got some that stay on, on the same level, they go fully to the head. You got some that take it to another level. You know? And uh, it's wild. <laughs> it, it's wild. And I basically can deal with anybody on the, on the trip. Once I, if, 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 say, say if, 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 you take, if you take your first hit and I see how, you, how, your, how, your, how your trip is, then I know next time. I, I, I accept it. And at one point, I thought my daughter was ashamed of me. But she, she said, Mama, I'll never be ashamed of you. Hey, whatever you do, you know. And she asked me yesterday, she said, Mama, would you get mad at me if I put you in a rehab? I told her, No. But she just can't put, she can't put me in a rehab. I have to go because I want to go. You alcoholic brothers and sisters, go ahead. But all their sins are before the Lord. But the Lord being gracious and knowing his workmanship, neither left nor forsook them, but spared them. See that? The Lord knows that we all are born in sin. So he's merciful unto us. So we got to take hold on that mercy and keep it moving, dig in, and do this work. But if you let your sins overcome you, shame on you. Shame on you. What do you say, y'all, sir? Come on. Uh, this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 3. Eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So you know what that's saying? Why are y'all looking at me like that? What are you saying? <laughs> Let me read it again. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. This is self-explanatory, but for those that like we was reading the scriptures about in my presence only the one that you just read I done because we tend to do we tend to abide by the Bible when we're in each other's company but when we're not in each other's company then we think that we can hide and do some wickedness and think nobody's gonna find out but the most I said that his eyes are everywhere beholding meaning checking out you doing evil and you doing good so it's being recorded all right, that's it. Right, give me that, and um, real quick, we're coming right back. You go to Romans 6 and um, 1, I think. Let me look at it. Romans chapter 6, chapter 6. Yeah, 6 and 1, that's it. Because we just read that the Most High is merciful, and He spares us. But Paul addressed that because you had some dumb Negroes that said, okay, we can keep sinning. Mm -hmm. And Lord, that's that Christian thought. That's Christianity. That's why he addressed it here. Romans 6 verse 1? Yep. Romans 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we keep on sinning? 
Go ahead. That grace may abound. That grace may abound because he is merciful. He is for all forgiven. Go ahead. God forbid. The answer is no. Go ahead. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Right. Because a lot of times people, you read that some of our forefathers did certain sins and then brothers say, David did it. I can do it too. Don't you know the scripture says the most high that David was the apple of the Most High's eye. And unless you were on that, because the Most High don't have that same love he got for all of us in here. I want to, let me say that, let me explain that. David did some sins that other Israelites did, and guess, and the Most High killed them Israelites. But he spared David, although he killed his firstborn. He said, I'm gonna spare you, David. Got his daughter raped, got his two sons. Right, he said, I'm gonna cause hell in your house, but I'm gonna spare you, David. Some of y'all think y'all on that got that same love. You don't. You don't. You see Aaron made a, a golden calf. Yeah, yeah. Moses prayed for Aaron. Most I said, I'm going to spare Aaron for that. For Moses. Some of y'all, for Moses' sake. Yeah. Some of y'all think, Aaron did it. I could do it too. You simple as hell. <laughs> There's no equality. The most high. Mm -mm. That equality, that's that democracy, Christianity in your head. You see one brother do a sin and get put to death. Mm -hmm. Like I remember one Passover, there was a brother put to death, cursing on his parents. And it's the most I had to, bam, killed him. Some of y'all think, well, he's all forgiving, but you don't know where his end point, what's the term, is that the right term? Where his threshold is with you, his breaking point is with you. In different areas with different people. Right, the most High knows you from the beginning. He says, okay, he got one more time to do this. One more time. And that'll be it for you. We've seen it over and over again. Give me the one in Galatians. Galatians 2 verse 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. So if we seek to be justified by Christ, yet we are found in the midst of sin. Go ahead. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? Did Christ command you? Yeah, keep on sinning. Keep on sinning. Come on. God forbid. The answer is no. Go ahead. For if I build... Again, no, read it. Just read it. Don't stress okay. wrong words. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, what does that mean? If I build again the thing that I destroyed, Javel, Javel, yeah, that guy. <laughs> it means that it says, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgression. Meaning, if I continue. Like the same sin. What do you mean if you what you destroy? If you build again the thing that you destroy? If I let's say I have a, a lesson skirt and then I and then I, then I destroy it. And if I how do you actually, destroy it? How do you destroy it? By repenting by okay. keeping the most. Okay. Then and if I go back to it now. That's how you build it again. That's why I build it again. So right. Then you find you find yourself what a transgressor. Yes. Right. Read it again, I thought. For if I build again the things which I destroyed. So if you used to be a crackhead, you gave up crack. But then somewhere in this truth, maybe a year later, two years later, you start dabbling in it again. Being a crackhead all over again. You're building it again. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, go ahead. I make myself a transgressor. You make yourself a transgressor. You make yourself a transgressor. Go ahead. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. Let's go back to Sirach. We were in chapter 17. Sirach 17, verse 20. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him, but all their sins are before the Lord. But the Lord, being gracious and knowing his workmanship, Neither left nor forsook them, but spared them. Mm -hmm. right. The alms of a man is as a signet with him, and he will keep the good deeds of man as the apple of the eye, and give repentance to his sons and daughters. So now, we pause, I want to pause right there. The alms of a man. There's a lot of things, a lot of levels to this truth. One of them, aside from repenting, is the giving of alms. Okay? The Most High is serious about that. Because the alms is what's used to help the poor of Israel. The alms is what's used to help get the truth out. That's what alms is used for. Okay? But you have some who's on the internet, and all they do, you know, all they're just internet Israelite. They're on Facebook. 
They're on, you always see the videos, but they don't give no alms and they have not repented. They are not the little ones. They're not the little ones. They don't care about anybody but themselves. Exactly. Because to make this happen, where we are now, to leave from the elder's house to come here, we have to put money together. Yeah, is this it? Is this it? Just this place right here? What y'all see down the line? Okay? If you care about your nation, once you get the message, once you see where we're trying to go with this, you're going to go into your pockets and you're going to give. That's why a lot of times I like to say, when y'all hear the end of the class and we request to give arms, how much y'all say to give? $5. And some of you do not think the most high word is worth five dollars. Because even with me saying it, week after week, we check and there's still nothing. You don't care! And that's like a measuring stick for you right there. I know now when your name come up, ignore this guy. He don't care. Exactly. And you know what's every about there's some people online who are not working. They get either A, unemployment, or B, welfare, public assistance. Guess what? They still give. Right. Still give. Even if it's five bucks, seven dollars, whatever they can. And we understand that. And the Most High is going to bless them and do double for them. But some don't even do that. Nothing. And you got jobs. I ain't giving nothing. Okay. Read that verse again. Verse 22. <laughs> the alms of a man is as a signet with him. And he will keep the good deeds of man as the apple of the eye and give repentance to his sons and daughters. Come on. Afterwards, he will rise up and reward them and render their recompense upon their heads. Read it again. Afterwards, he will rise up and reward them and render their recompense upon their heads. Go ahead. But unto them that repent, he granted them return and comforted those that failed in patience. And comforted those that, what does it mean, comforted us that failed in patience? Joel, what does that mean? Comforted those that failed in patience. Um, he comforted those that failed in patience means those brothers that went off into the sin, that couldn't endure. Um, the Most High sent the brother, like, you know, sent him to bring the scriptures to uplift the spirit, to exhort him, or have another brother correct him through the scriptures, show that, yo, you're going off. Okay. He allowed that brother and or sister to get themselves together by sending his word through another brother or sister. Yes. Right? Okay. Jump over to chapter 18 and verse 24. This is what help you when you about to fall in the midst of sin. This is a verse that you should meditate on. Chapter 18, verse 24. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. Read it again. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. Read it again. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. So before you decide to sin, you might want to think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. The most I can get you anytime. He can get you driving in your car. I bet them people on the bus that got 50 people got killed on the bus. I bet none of them thought that the Lord was going to jack them up. The bus flying went sideways, hit a pole, a pole went right through the window. Okay, buddy, Cut all heads, heads off, all, all kinds of stuff. Cut their heads off. At least 14 people were killed in this horrific bus crash in New York. The tour bus was returning from a casino when it swerved off the highway and hit a pole that sheared the vehicle in two. He strikes the stanchion of the, the sign as and apparently the, the bus is tipped over at that time and it cuts down right down the middle of the bus. Witnesses describe the scene as simply horrific. I, I saw people about, they were really close to the bus and telling to other people not to get there. I hope saying, you don't want to see this. You know, this is really why and crying. The driver of the bus did survive and has told police that he lost control when he tried to evade a swerving tractor trailer. The bus is in the center lane. The truck is in the left-hand lane. Uh, the truck either starts to swerve or perhaps even hits the bus. We're not, we're not certain at this time. He says the truck didn't stop at the scene. He says they do have some of the license plate numbers and are hunting for the truck and its drivers. Officials say there were at least 31 people on board. The accident also forced officials to close part of the interstate for hours. Sandy Kozell, the Associated Press. You would have never imagined such a thing. That's why the scriptures call God the king of terrors. Give me that one in Hebrews. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the Most High. Give me that one, Hebrews 10. Some of y'all just play games. Because you fear man. If the brother don't see me, I'm good. Brother, we ain't nobody. What are we going to do to you? I wish we had some stairs to throw some of you down, but we ain't even got that. 1031. Hebrews 1031. 
Hebrews 10 verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Read it again. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Most High got all kind of ways to jack us up. All kinds of ways. All the time. I'm suspecting. You know what some of y'all think? Y'all think this is, what was that movie where you can see death coming? Final Destination. destination. Y'all think this is the Final Destination. You're going to outsmart God. Y'all stupid. They're going to sit in a different seat on the bus. Yeah, I ain't going to sit there. I'm going to move. God can't get me. You cannot outsmart God. You still think he can outsmart God. You can't. None of us can. They'll be sitting in the movie theater watching that thing, talking about some, yeah, we can outsmart death. And then the Joker comes in and blasts all of you. <laughs> hey, I have to show you that all this right. What Esau is trying to do to outsmart God? What is Esau trying to do? Wasting billions of dollars to do it. Go to Mars. What? Go to Mars. They trying to leave the earth. They think that they can escape judgment. And they spending billions of dollars to do it. So to show you that spirit is out there. Well, you know, during the Apollo program, uh, astronauts went to the moon, collected rocks, brought them back to earth. They were analyzed on earth. And what you're saying here through the MSL, those rocks and soil will be put inside of uh, uh, curiosity and those same tests done in place on Mars. A generation ago, human beings, brave, courageous, in this case men, visited the moon for two-day sorties and collected nearly 900 pounds of these priceless samples of the history of another world. And we brought them back to Earth and we were revolutionized. Oh my God, the surface of the moon was an ancient record book three to four plus billion years ago. Nothing like we normally see on Earth, anywhere you'd normally go. So what we've now done with robots, with new technology, with smart engineers, computers, and scientists working together, we said, OK, Mars is really hard to get to for people right now. We'd love to get them there. It's, a, it's an aim, I think, of, of the space agencies of the world. So let's invert the, the question. Let's send the best lab gear, the kind we had in labs here on Earth in 1969, 70, 71, 72, to Mars. And so inside the Curiosity, we have two payloads, one about the size of a microwave oven. That seems to be a unit of instrument size. But anyway, we all have them, so which can measure parts per billion of the chemicals and the history of those chemicals that make up the rocks and soils that are, if you will, the fingerprints for past environments and even for past chemistries that could link to life if it ever existed. We'll be able to make definitive analyses, dozens of them, of the most interesting rocks and soils in ways so far beyond anything we've ever done in deep space that it's almost unimaginable. It, they will be as good as those we made when the first moon rocks came back here on Earth. Now, through robots, with people here, on the surface of Mars. We'll use techniques that a geologist like myself uses, normally with big instruments in our labs, to measure how the rocks put themselves together through what we call minerals. We'll be able to measure definitive mineralogies how that rock was formed and how it lived and grew up to be what it is on the surface of Mars through an instrument that does what we call X-ray diffraction on Mars. In the end game, in the last minute or so, we have a special system that will allow us to photograph in movie mode, high definition movie mode, the site where we will finally come to rest in our, in our touchdown. This is new. This is revolutionary. This camera system, de developed by Mainland Space Science Systems in San Diego, can basically take every fifth of a second a high definition frame and put them together as a movie, but also, especially when you get really close to the surface, produce images the size of maybe a backyard, a football field, at exquisite resolution, at the resolution as if we were standing there oh, with oh, ourselves. I'm gonna stop you right there. Right. You said images the size of a football field so that when you push in and magnify, you're really looking at a really close MSL will give us a taste of that vicariously. Mm -hmm. But when we go, ourselves, humanity, and stand and kick our boots, feet, whatever, probably not sandals, it's cold there, boots on Mars, that will be, you know, like the Columbus voyages of the, of the early Renaissance, looking at the new world where we're living. So, to me, MSL is the pathfinder. <laughs> You ever say something as small as slamming your finger in the door, bumping your head on a, a wall top or something like that? Little thing, the most I could have had a nail there. There was one thing they had on the news, it was a field. This guy bought a horse. It was a hundred ways to die, that show. Oh, He's riding his horse, he just bought a field. He had a horse, and that whole field, it was like 20 acres he had. There was only one nail propped up. He fell off the horse. 
and his head landed on that one nail. They said, what is the odds of that? The angel was talking to the horse. You're gonna gallop right over there. I'm gonna knock him off, don't worry, I got this. Boom! The man fell off, he had his head, bam, right on the nail. I'm dead. He's the king of terrors. You cannot outsmart the most high. You cannot outsmart the most high. I'm told that you don't believe that. When me and my wife got a joke. When we get jacked up, we say, repent, black devil. You better repent. You chop your finger, you slam your arm. Ah! You better, something you done, you were thinking something, I know you was. Them thoughts are catch, you better repent. Uh, <laughs> can we go back to Sirach 17, 23? Chapter 17, verse 22. The arms of a man is as a signet with him. What does the word signet mean? Because y'all just read right over that. Do you have the definition? I don't want your, your, I want it from the dictionary. What does the word signet mean? Uh, the word signet means a small seal on a finger ring, a small official seal for legal documentation and for contracts. What? That's what I got here. Say that again. A small official seal for legal documents and contracts. Okay, mine says a seal, especially one used to mark documents that are official. All of you have paperwork before the Most High. Guess what? When the time come, 